Word up, Justin Hunt, the company man, the company man YouTube channel, our special guest today, creator, founder, and producer of the Thought Festival. That's the Happiness of Pursuit Festival in Oxnard, California, 60 East. How's it going, man? What's going on? I'm doing good. You know, the last minute stress before a show uh, is always there, but um, yeah, we got, we feeling good. So break this down for me. This is your, is this your fifth year or your sixth year? Uh, this is our, our fifth year. We started in 2017, but then we had the, the pandemic in the middle, so we kind of skipped the year. Okay. So where'd this idea come from? I love the title. I think it's so empowering. It's uplifting. It's inspiring. And I think it connects to the artist's journey, the happiness of pursuit. Um, I mean, I've just been an artist for, for so long, like starting off in my career and then just getting to journey and uh, meet so many different artists around the world and just meet so many dope people. And then having the idea of always wanting to build a platform or somewhere that they can come share their message and their music with my audience and kind of just um, be a provider of that. And um, yeah, just after so many years of being just touring and stuff like that, I just had a, a, a big... Um, database of contacts you know that that i always wanted to work with and just kind of invite out here to uh to perform so the idea of the festival is kind of just like that was the concept you know building a platform of all the people that i've met you know on my journey and letting them express you know their journey to to my fan base and all that you have a monster lineup set up this year uh reason huge fan of reason he's on uh the lineup this year the Far Side, the remix version of The Far Side, but The Far Side is on a performing this year. Sci High's on the stage, Sugar Free, Ninth Wonder, and the Mussolini. One of my favorite albums this year, too. They had an under underrated project that dropped uh, in January. Locksmith, Open Mic Eagle, Afro. I mean, the list goes on. The list goes on. Uh, can you give us a sense of what it takes to actually bring this level of talent together? and put them on a stage in a, in a dynamic festival like this? Uh, patience, a lot, a lot of patience. Um, definitely um, having not only the platform, but the, the capability to do it, you know, along with the, the sponsors and all, all the, the money that behind the show that it takes to put it together, but also just combining different avenues of hip hop. You know, there's so many different branches to the hip hop tree that we try to add, uh, add all of those flavors into this festival and not stick to one sound or anything like that. And, um, you know, it rarely works. We always have like the ideal lineup that we want to book before the show, but it never works out that all those artists are available the same day. It just like happenstance that we're able to have so many people available on one day. And um, yeah, I mean, that's that's where the patience comes in. You know, I love uh, I love there's a couple of names up here that really stand out to me for, for different reasons. One, you know, a lot of these artists I've known for a very long time. Crisis just had one of my favorite tracks on uh, Jid's The Forever Story. He produced money on that. He'll be performing on the stage uh, at the Happiness or Pursuit Festival. I've always been a big fan of Open Mike Eagle. I just think he's brilliant. Um, he's going to be there. But Daisy Lynn, Daisy Lynn is on this bill and she has been putting out what I think are fantastic uh, Instagram reels and shorts of her rhyming. She's new to the microphone, fairly new to the microphone, but she's also my neighbor. Oh, we, wow. lived, we lived in the same building for a year and then she moved to another condo building across the street uh, from where we live now. But I've seen her grind like really up close, you know, like she is 100% dedicated to various forms of art and also to uh, improving as an MC. Uh, how did you how did you guys come across each other and why did it make sense to have Daisy Lynn on stage? Um, back back to me just being an artist first and foremost and crossing paths with with different artists on different levels. Um, and to to be honest with her, it all happened organically. And like I just happened to be out like a, a night out with my friends, and uh, he, one of my homies actually invited his coworker to to where we were, and we start talking hip hop. And like me and this dude don't know each other. He doesn't know that I throw the festival because usually people that know I throw the festival always be like, oh, let's check out my homie, check out my homie. Right. This was like a completely like organic conversation and we're just talking hip hop. And then he's like, oh, yo, you should check out um, my my old coworker that I used to work with. And it happened to be Daisy. And I was like, yo, she is dope. Like I need to um, 
I need to holler at her. And I, I actually happened to be throwing like a ladies night event around that time that I was booking for. So then I was like, yo, I'm gonna holler at her and give her an opportunity to, uh, to open for Reverie, I believe it was. And um, she came through and she told me this was one of her very first shows and she absolutely killed it. And I just, you know, like um, when you see it, you know it, you know, if somebody's got it, you, you can just see it. And that's just one of those people that I was like, oh, she, she's about to pop. Like I, I could see it already. Mm-hmm. And then just in between the time that of doing that to, to mm-hmm. now, she's already done so much and gotten on the radars of people like Sway and Havoc and all, all these people that just recognize that the grind and the talent and, and that dopeness. And uh, back to adding different flavors to the festival, we have artists of all levels. And I think I thought it would be dope to add her because she's she's on that come up. But she's already got the attention of a lot of people. Word up, word up. I mean, I think that's well said, man. She's, she's moving fast. And I think she's gonna impress the audience uh, at the festival. Now you're on the bill as well, 60 East and Friends. Who are the friends? Um, so every year, like I added this and friends so we could have special guests to the to the show. And um, to be honest, I never really know who it's gonna be. Like the week of the show, I'll usually see which one of my homies are in town touring or whatever and have yeah. happen to have like an off day or whatever. And I'll just be like, yo, you know, we got the festival coming up, you want to start <laughs> through. And um, we have a couple ideas of who it's going to be, but it's always it's always uh, super dope. We've had a I had Blue pop out one time. I had Afro pop out. I had Elzai, um, Self Provoked, um, Tumex, a uh, couple couple other people. But yeah, it's it's always a pleasant surprise for the audience. Right. Yeah, I can't wait to see who you bring out uh, as part of that 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 part of the set. Um, now tell me about the ground wave stage with MERS. I, he put out a, a really detailed uh, Instagram reel recently just talking about his history with the festival and the respect that he has for you. Uh, but what can the audience look forward to on the ground wave stage? I mean, this it's really a full circle moment because MERS booked me on my first festival, which was the Pay Dues Festival. And I got to finally mm-hmm. return the favor and book him as a headliner for our festival in 2019. And like that, I had been trying to pay him back for like pay dues because I was like the best day of my life. And um, it, it was really dope. So now to even have him involved, like on the business side of the festival is even even better. And he had uh, just reached out to me and told me what he was doing with the ground waves movement. And he thought it would be a good idea if he was able to bring that platform to the festival to not only help promote the festival uh, nationally, but also to provide the opportunity for these up and coming artists, which is also something that we've that we've been trying to do and back to the adding the artists from different levels of, of the game or whatever. So we thought we, we kind of sat down and had a conversation about it. And we thought it would be a good idea to have him not only host the stage, but he's also curating the whole lineup. He, he handpicked every single artist on the bill, which me knowing as an artist felt really good when he picked me to be on pay due. So I know the people that he picked, it's a big deal for them. Merz is a legend, you know, when he reaches out and is like, yo, I want you to come perform at this festival I'm a part of, that's a big deal. Mm-hmm. And um, we just back, back to just wanting to give back to the community and offering up and coming artists opportunities. It's just both something we both are really passionate about. And uh, it's just something we were able to make happen. That's dope, that's dope. You know, from a, I've worked with a couple of festivals in my career. I started my career with Brooklyn Bodega. They put on the Brooklyn Hip Hop Festival in New York City. Um, and I've seen sort of just the madness that goes on behind the scenes all the way up until festival day. How stressed are you right now? I mean, are you pretty calm? You look, you seem pretty zen, at least on this, <laughs> on this, in this conversation, but I know that there's so many moving pieces. How's it feel so far? Um, it's, I'm, I'm all right. I've learned over the years, I've learned to not kill myself over it because I've learned like really quick. And then talking to people like MERS and other people that throw festivals that this, it could really, you know, do some damage to you if you let it. And I've learned right. to kind of just roll with the punches and just learn people are going to not show up. People are going to cancel. People are going to get sick. Whatever's going to happen is going to happen. And you can't, you can't hurt, you know, you can't go crazy about it and drive yourself crazy. The thing with me is also that I just, you know, I'm a pops, I'm a dad, I have a daughter, I have like a whole regular life and just right. the whole doing the music, I still have shows coming up and traveling that I have to do in between all this, you know, these next three weeks and still focusing on trying to sell as many tickets as possible and accommodating all the artists. It's, 
it's a lot it's a lot on the plate but um yeah i've just i've learned to like roll with the punches and just kind of remain stress-free stay on the exercise regimen and just like not stay up all night working on the festival getting my sleep and all that word up word up i want to um i want to shift gears a bit and ask you some some 2022 rap music questions oh you are an artist you know i think hip-hop for me hip-hop is my favorite culture raps my favorite genre because i'm a competitive person and so is the genre itself um your top album of the year so far mm. oh man i might have to look at my my spotify for that <laughs> um an album that has stood out to me oh man I mean, it's possible you're so into the the festival that you're not even, you know, necessarily paying up, paying attention to everything that's dropped. This has been a really good year for music. Yeah. Um. To be honest, I try to stay on top of everything just because, like, curating the festival, we try to be on top of not only what's new and what's hot, but what's what's coming and what's you know what's super dope. Um. That's out. But like you said, the JID album, I was really impressed by. Uh, thought that was super dope. I really like the Damo Genesis and Evidences project that they recently dropped. Um, super dope. I've really gotten into Loot recently from Dreamville. I don't think mm -hmm. he's dropped an album this year. I don't know if it was this year, but uh, I was rocking with Kendrick's album. Um, John Connor, uh, I'll, I'll twist it. I think, oh, it's not an album. It was actually a, a mixtape. Well, his latest installment of his best in the world mixtape over Nas beats. I was like, I've been bumping that like crazy these past couple of weeks. And uh, yeah, I'll stick with those. But yeah, JID, I know it was like two, three weeks recently, but um, yeah, I really been rocking with that project. You know, it's funny. I was just talking to John Connor maybe two days ago and I'm not up on that series. I got to check that series out. I haven't oh, checked man. out his, his, uh, <laughs> his series with Nas, man. It's, it's dope like that. That's what's up. Oh, it's crazy. The the Blue album and the that's over Jay Z beats, and then uh, the John Connor LP, I believe it's called over Eminem beats. Like those those two projects, I think, are what got Dr. Dre's attention. Had he if he had not already been working with them, but um, yeah, those two projects are the ones that that caught my attention as well. What's one thing that an artist can do to get your attention? Should they be interested in performing at the happiness of pursuit festival uh being dope being being dope being consistent ma making your rounds um like i said we're we're really active so we we tour we know who's popping in what city and stuff like that who's bubbling and um th these days it's kind of different because we used to have to put in that groundwork touring and stuff like that but these days you got people that are consistent on tiktok or instagram or whatever it may be and building their fan bases and audiences that way and I think it's a little trickier to come across those artists just because there's so much stuff going on online. Mm -hmm. But um, I think you see it, you know what I mean? When it starts, when this person shares it or the publications pick it up or you see so-and-so talking about, oh, this person should drop this freestyle or whatever it may be. But um, I believe being active and consistent is is what's going to get you there. Yeah. And we keep, we keep our eyes and ears open constantly too. So we're, we're like actively looking for new artists. I can testify to that too, because you and I ran into each other at the Blue and Exile 15 year anniversary show yeah. in LA. And um, that's where you asked if I would be interested in, in, in hosting. So I really appreciate that. I'm excited to be a part of this as well. I think it's a fantastic lineup. I think it's a fantastic organization, but you were literally in the streets. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> like you would push in the festival, you know what I mean? Um, and you knew, you know, the culture that was surrounding you know, just what's happening in 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 the region in LA and what's happening in hip hop. Um, so anyone who's listening, yeah, 60 East is, he's out here. <laughs> what did you think of that Blue and Exile show? 15 years of Blow the Heavens, man. It's still kind of trippy to me. I, I loved it. Um, you know, I've actually like been able to build a good relationship with Blue and X. Um, there's just super dope. That album is just, it's crazy how much it's developed into, I think it's always been a classic, but I think it's kind of built like a legend behind it now, where it's people like, that's one of the go-to albums you got to go to if you're in this in indie hip hop space or whatever you want to call it. And um, I, I, I loved it. I got to be at the 10th year anniversary when they performed with like a band also. That, that was crazy. But yeah, I was like was super impressed by it. Yeah. What do you think makes a classic album in your opinion? 
<clears throat> I mean, aside from production, like awesome production and awesome lyrics and stuff like that throughout the whole project consistently, I like, I like conceptual albums. And I've noticed that a lot of the albums in my top 10 classics or whatever are conceptualized. They all have, you know, from the from the Illmatics to the Below the Heavens to the documentary to the Get Rich or Die Tryings or whatever, they all, they're all kind of themed. And I feel like that kind of comes into the movie telling aspect of it. And I'm a huge movie head. So it feels like the album is a movie and it's like a classic movie that you could just watch from front to back because you need all aspects of that story. Um, but yeah, I think, I think that might have something to do with it. Yeah, I always, um, you know, it's funny, I think, a lot of people have positioned over the years into time being the biggest difference maker when it comes to whether something's a classic or not. And I always find that to be interesting because we didn't give albums that much time in the beginning. Like, you know, not, not in the beginning, but like, let's say in the 90s or to the early 2000s, like people would say it was a classic, like pretty early. You know, it wasn't like there was that much time given before Illmatic was a classic. You know, it wasn't that much time given before The Chronic was a classic, you know. And now we're in this place where, you know, artists, I think, and I think largely because, you know, we have generations that are older now, they become more protective of their youth and they don't want to water down their personal perspectives by, you know, acknowledging things that they're probably not listening to as intense, intensively and intentionally as they, as they were when they were, in school with disposable income. But it's interesting now when I hear people say, oh man, we gotta give it so much time before it's a classic. You know, we gotta wait at least five, 10 years to see if it's a classic. I'm like, we did not do that. We're ready to die. What are you talking about? Like we knew, like we knew freaking All Eyes On Me was a classic the week it came out. You know what I mean? Like, are you, have you ever thought about that? Time-wise, yeah, just cause um, I feel like some albums have takes I feel like Below the Heavens might be one of those albums that it kind of took time to pick up that steam and for the reputation into the word to get out just because they were still so independent at the time I, I don't remember how many uh records had got printed or whatever initially but I know it wasn't a lot but when those records start making their rounds and people start spreading it and that word of mouth really starts popping off like I said the legend kind of starts building so um maybe that might have to do with it as far as maybe that that album not getting out as big as it could have, like whenever it dropped and it took time for it to spread or spread around and make its rounds or whatever. But um, yeah, I, I've definitely heard some albums where I'm like, oh no, that's a classic the day that after I hear it. And um, so yeah, I think it could go both ways. Yeah, I think it's one of those, you know, I, I feel like people, I feel like there's a lot of Rush Limbaugh's in rap and I'm not saying that necessarily, I'm not talking politically. I think that people, when they get older, they inherently get more conservative. You know, and I remember when it was taboo to say Kendrick might be the greatest of all time. You know, now it's like an obvious statement, you know. <laughs> and so, you know, that's one thing I really like about, you know, the festival, the lineup you're putting together. It really does have a great balance of generations. You know, you've got people that have been there for a while. You've got people who are on to come up, looking to come up. And uh, I think that's one of the things that's really, really uh important about hip hop. It really is culture, it really is community. And uh, you're highlighting that with the Happiness of Pursuit Festival. Thank you, appreciate that. Is there anything else you wanna share, you wanna break down, you want people to know? Oh, well, we can get into whatever you wanna get into. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the, the festival, um, I mean, anything is, anything goes, you know? Um, is there one particular artist you are personally excited about seeing? So uh, since I pick mo the majority of the lineup, I'll, I'm a fan of everybody on the bill. Oh, there you I, go. Okay. I've seen, I've definitely <laughs> seen a, a lot of the artists perform before, but um, since I've been trying to see Reason live for a minute now, but every time like I, I pull up to see him, he's already they're already gone on or whatever it happened. But um, sure. I'm a big fan of what Reason's doing as of late, so I'm excited to see him and um. I would say the same about Sci High, just because I'm such, I've been a big fan of Sci High for a long time, but I've never gotten the opportunity to see him live. So definitely excited to see what he does live. Sci High is a, is a monster. He's an army and a Navy. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, is there someone or, or some ones that are on the bill that people may not know about that you're particularly uh, excited to see how the audience reacts to? 
Oh, most definitely. Um, I I think we already spoke about Daisy, but um, I definitely think she's one of them. She's uh, even when we booked her for for the Reverie show, a lot of people were like, "Yo, who's who's this?" Like we haven't seen or heard the name around. I was like, "Just watch, <laughs> just watch. You're gonna you're gonna see." And um, yeah, that that's honestly one of the reasons I wanted her on the main stage as well, just to um, see what she does on it. You know what I mean? I'm definitely excited for that. On the second stage, um, I think Soundtrack is gonna put on a crazy show. Uh, for those who don't know, Soundtrack is the newest member of the Soul Council coming from Oakland. Uh, I think he's going to play some crazy beats that are going to have people like, yo, what's if they're not familiar with what he does, um, you know, he'd be flipping a lot of known samples and just putting a completely different spin on them. So I'm super excited to see what he does. I've heard, I know Crisis pretty well, so he told me he's got a couple special guests for his set. And um, I'm excited to see that live because uh, I think a lot of people are going to be super surprised by who he brings out. Um, yeah, that, that list can go did on. Did he though. tell you who he's going to bring out? He did. Uh, I can't. I can't really announce it. But um, yeah, it's it's definitely going to be. It's definitely going to be dope because uh, yeah, a lot of people were excited when you know he worked with who he worked with, and uh, yeah, to see it back in action is going to be dope. Well, we're going to talk about this off record because. <laughs> um. King Ork is having a crazy year, man. You oh, know, yeah. big shout out to Noah James. You know, I he's to me one of the most inspirational uh, characters, artists, people, personalities that I've met in this industry. Um, he's lost a ton of weight and he's gained uh, a ton of weighty bars over the over the time that I've known him. And his last project charted on iTunes. It was I think it was top three on uh, our Apple Music. Excuse me. And uh, I was just so excited for him. And if anybody's ever been to uh, a King Orca performance, uh, it's, 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 it's magnificent and magnanimous in both, in both senses. Uh, so I'm excited to see him too, because I want to see him perform this project. Yeah, big shout out to Noah. He's, he's actually uh, really involved with the festival since year two. He's really helped me out with um not only running that that common ground stage that also pays tribute to what he did in the IE back in the day, but um, you know, curating the lineup and kind of bringing in certain people that maybe I hadn't been connected to already and stuff like that. But yeah, me, me, Noah, Lisa, um, the team's very small, so big shout out to Noah and everything he's done to help bring the festival to life. Nice word up. Um, that's really all I have for you, Sixty East, and this is. Uh, the Happiness of Pursuit Festival, it's at uh, Firewater in Ontario, California on Saturday, October 1st, 2022. So we're about two and a half weeks away uh, from the day I'll be hosting along with Lush One. Yeah. Uh, Merz will be hosting as well. Uh, is there anything else you want people to know? Um. You know, just come check out the festival if, you know, you're into this kind of hip hop, if you just need your fix of hip hop culture, there's not too many events like this still going on that cater to this kind of music. So it's like, you know, there's not too many places where you can see all these artists come together where you can see, you know, graffiti, live art, break dancers, b-boys, all that over multiple stages. We have artists coming from all over the country, so it's going to be a big representation of what's going on now before every, you know, every since hip hop has been started or whatever you want to say, just the two names at the top represent over 30 years in hip hop. So, um, yeah, you know, just come check us out, see what we're doing and uh, come rock with us. Where can they find tickets? Uh, thopfest.net is the website. Um, you can follow us at thopfest, T-H-O-P-F-E-S-T -E on everything. Um, we're doing a bunch of giveaways. So if you want to win some free tickets, you know, follow us, send us a DM. Especially if you see this interview and you see this, you know, send us a DM saying you saw the interview. We'll give you guys some free tickets or whatever. Um, if you're coming from out of state, we got people coming from out the country, out of state. And if you send us a picture of your plane ticket, we'll give you guys a free ticket um, if you're making the trip. So, yeah, come. Come rock with us. 60 East looking out. That's what I'm saying, man. Hip hop is culture. It's community. You guys are a great example of that. Yo, thank you, Justin. Appreciate you doing this too. Not only hosting, but uh, yeah, for having us on the show. Boy, no doubt, man. I'm probably going to use you in, uh, uh, I'm doing a piece on 
breaking news. I'm doing a piece on this Jid album, right? Because I think this Jid album to me is an instant classic right now, whether or not time will, will tell that tale, I think to a generation of people, this will hit like one, right? I think it's gonna live somewhere between below the heavens and section 80 for a population of people, right? And I'm really digging into the reasons why when it comes to the project, but also when it comes to what people consider a classic album. And you said you like, you know, the, the concept behind it, things that feel like a movie, the storytelling, right? I got Crooked Eye talking about it in this, this piece too. He's got a totally different thing that he thinks about when he thinks about classics. Both of the things you guys said apply to this project. You know what I mean? And so it's really a conversation about what makes a classic album. So you'll be in that and you'll be in this. So you got two, uh, two uh, 60 East appearances coming up on, on uh, the Company Man Productions. Cool. Appreciate that.